Hi, I would like to describe for you today our work that's appearing in this issue of Cell that describes the interaction of two proteins that we call MIND and MIND-E and that undergo a coupled oscillation between the ends of the cell to regulate cytokinesis in the bacterium E. coli. I would also like to describe our model about the Tarzan, called the Tarzan of the Jungle model to explain how these two proteins can persist at the membrane while at the same time knocking each other off the membrane. In most bacteria, cell division occurs precisely at mid-cell. How this spatial regulation achieved is a matter of intense investigation. In bacteria, cytokinesis depends upon the Z-ring, which is formed through the polymerization of the tubulant homolog FDSZ. And it's known that the vision occurs wherever the Z-ring is positioned. So the question becomes, how is the position of the Z-ring determined? In E. coli, a major regulator of the position of the Z-ring is the MIN system. This diagram summarizes the oscillatory behavior of the MIN proteins that came from the study of functional GFP fusions to the three MIN proteins, MIN D, E, and C. MIN D and C form a polar zone at one end of the cell flanked by a MIN E ring. As the MIN E ring proceeds towards the pole of the cell, it displaces the MIN D and C, and they reassemble at the other end of the cell. Now, MIN D and C are an antagonist of FDSZ assembly, and over time, their concentration is highest at the poles of the cell and lowest at mid-cell, where the Z ring is going to form. Our story today starts with the structure of MIN E, which has two domains. It has a MIN D interaction domain and a topological domain. The name for the second domain comes from the fact that it has to be fused to the other domain in order for MIN-E to function properly. Now the structure of the topological domain was done in 2000. And as you can see from the figure, it's a dimer, has two helices and a four-stranded beta sheet. But it's missing the MIN-D interaction domain. Then last year, the structure of MIN-E from Neisseria gonorrhea became available. As you can see, it is a six-stranded structure. It has the two additional strands located at the dimer interface, and these are the MIND interaction domain. Furthermore, these strands are masked by N-terminal helices, which we show are membrane targeting sequences. So how are these strands able to interact with MIND if they're sequestered at the dimer interface and masked by these N-terminal helices? Kyung Tae Park, a graduate student in the lab, began this project by studying mutants of MIND that no longer interact with MIND-E. He was then able to isolate MIN-E mutants that regained interaction with MIN-D. And when we examined these MIN-E mutants, we found they all had the same uh, change in their structure. In each case, isoleucine 24, indicated here in yellow, has been altered to a, from a hydrophobic amino acid to a hydrophilic amino acid. We hypothesized that these alterations cause the beta strands, these red strands, to come out of the structure and become available to bind MIND. It then follows that the MIND mutants we started with were unable to bind MIND and unable to induce this conformational change in MIND. It follows then from the wild type proteins that in the wild type situation, MIND is sensed by MIND and MIND then undergoes these conformational changes so that it can bind to MIND. To obtain validation of this uh, hypothesis, we obtained some genetic and biochemical evidence to support these conformational changes. However, the most convincing evidence come from Kyung Park in collaboration with our structural biology colleagues, obtaining structures of the MIND-E complex. So as you can see in this slide, this is an indication of MIND as it exists in our crystal structure. We have superimposed on that the structure of free MIND-E. Now we will see that what we actually observed in the crystal structure is MIN-E undergoes a transformation between what we saw in the free form and what we see in the complex. And as you can see, the red strands come out of the structure and assemble as an alpha helix at the MIN-D dimer interface. Note also that the MIN-E structure is a four-stranded structure that remains. The MIN-E that we used in this structure was missing the N-terminal helices that I mentioned could be membrane targeting sequences. So to see where they end up in the structure, we have modeled the MIN-DE structure on the membrane. The MIN-D binds to the membrane through its membrane targeting sequences. And as you can see, the MIN-E, as it's bound to the MIN-D, the N-terminus position close to the membrane. And this positions the membrane targeting sequence, which we've indicated by a dotted line colored cyan, 
it shows that it can interact directly with the membrane. From this structural data, then we were able to assemble a model for how MIND-D and E interact with the membrane. MIND-D, shown here, binds ATP and binds to the membrane as a dimer. MIND-E, existing in the six-stranded latent form, somehow approaches MIND-D and undergoes this conformational change in which the red beta strands are released. This MIND-D, which we call the active form, then contacts MIND-D, and one of the beta strands assembles into an alpha helix bound to MIND-D. This complex, however, is not stable because MIND-E stimulates the ATPase activity of MIND-D, and MIND-D will come off the membrane. MIND-E will then return to its active form, and is still associated with the membrane. However, it can then either come off the membrane and uh, go back to its six-stranded structure, latent form, or, if there's another MIND-D around, it can then transfer to this other MIND-D. So if the concentration or the local concentration of MIND-D is high, MIND-E will transfer from one MIND-D to the next. If the concentration is low, MIND-E will fall off the membrane. It is this behavior of MIND-E to swing from one MIND-D to the next, which we refer to as our Tarzan of the Jungle model. And we think this model is important for MIND-E and D to undergo this coupled oscillation that that leads to the regulation of cytokinesis.